Massage or pressure point therapy has given excellent relief of headaches in clinical trials and it's something you can easily do yourself at home. So in this video I'll show you the simple techniques and where to apply them. Now quick word of warning, I don't want you massaging if you've got something like a brain tumour or an aneurysm so consider this as general information only and get checked out and specific advice from a professional familiar with your needs. Now, you may want to watch parts of this video at a time, so I'll divide into the following sections. Now the first is how to find where to massage, the basic techniques, the individual muscles involved, and in the final section is where I'll summarize it all into a simple routine. Now, most videos and articles on pressure points for headaches just give a small number of acupuncture based points. Now the problem with this is that there's no way known of knowing whether these points are involved or not and they're only a fraction of the points that are commonly involved. Now scientists have identified nine different muscles that contain points that commonly cause headaches and each muscle can have multiple points. Now in this guide I'll show you all muscles. Now it sounds a lot but with a simple routine I'll show you, you can examine them all in under a minute. Now the points we're looking at have been around forever. Now when ancient civilizations found them, without the scientific knowledge we have today, they came up with things like acupuncture meridians and life forces. Now more recently scientists have identified the same points, calling them myofascial trigger points or trigger points for short, and given them proper scientific analysis. Now that's made a huge difference. Now we now properly identify them, we can see if they're involved or not, and even more importantly it's enabled better ways of treating them to be developed. Now, they found that there are tender lumps within tight bands of muscle that shoot pain when you're pressing them, so we use that to find them. And we have charts like these to help identify which could be involved, or basically where to look. So, the way we find the points is simple. We use charts like these to show the points that are commonly involved, then we examine the muscles looking for tight bands and tender lumps that shoot pain when you're pressing them. Now, I'll show you how to do the examination now and where to look in the section on the individual muscles. Now, looking at the larger muscles first, we systematically examine them using the flats of your fingers. Now, if you find an area of tenderness or tightness, use one or two fingers to examine more deeply, looking for a tender lump that shoots pain when you're pressing it. Now, often pressing on the lump will reproduce your headache, which confirms they're the problem. Now, after you've done the treatment, you can even press again and see if the lump's gone and it doesn't shoot pain anymore. Now, the thinner muscles such as those covering a skull and jaw don't require the deeper pressure and the lumps can be very small and hard to find. So what you do is systematically examine the muscle with the pads of one or two fingers and treat any area that feels a bit tight or tender and maybe shoots pain when you're pressing it. Now, let's look at the simple techniques you can do yourself. Now because the muscles vary a lot in thickness, we need more than one. Now the first is the basic pressure technique where you apply pressure while the point fades. Now when therapists do this, they can use quite painful pressure and hold it for a long time. Now that's hard to do on yourself and if you don't know what you're doing, you can easily do a lot of harm. Now the good news is that you don't need to do that. Now a trial found that repeated moderate pressure is very effective. Now all you need to do is apply moderate, not painful pressure for 10 seconds, then repeat for a total of 5 times. Now there's several ways to do this. Now first you can use pressure from your fingers or thumbs. Now with some of the muscles, you can actually pinch the muscle between your fingers and thumbs. Now another way is to use some sort of tool like this. Now this one is fine because you can have the muscle relaxed and you don't need to get into awkward positions and you can easily control the pressure. Now if you use balls or foam rollers, you can't do that, which is why as a chiropractor for over 27 years, I saw way too many people hurt themselves trying. Now the second technique is a combination of pressure and massage that's ideally suited for the thin muscles and it's very similar to what was used in a lot of the successful clinical trials. Now start by using uh, your finger to examine the muscle. Now as I said before, some of the muscles are very thin, so any lump will be too small to feel. Now you'll just find a localized area of tenderness and tightness. Now find the center of the area and apply moderate pressure. Now you may feel the pain fade and the muscle relax. Now maintain this pressure until you feel this 
or for a maximum of two minutes, then finish with about five to 10 seconds of gentle rubbing with circular motion about one centimeter in diameter. Now, I mentioned before that scientific investigation has helped scientists understand these points and work out better ways of treating them. And they found that when the muscle spasm forming a lump, it caused the muscle to tighten, putting pressure on the blood vessels, restricting blood flow and causing a buildup of waste products in the muscles. Now knowing that, vibration massage is an excellent therapy. Now as shown in this diagram, if you apply vibration massage, the vibrations will penetrate the muscles, stop the spasm, relax the muscle, increase the blood flow and help pump out the waste. Now it's highly effective and certainly much nicer than painful pressure or sticking in needles. Now, I'll link a video with details, but to use this technique, all you need to do is place the massage on the muscle over the point and let the vibrations penetrate. Now, to do it, you'll need a proper vibration massager, not a massage gun. Now, in fact, the massage gun is more likely to stir the problem up. Now, I'll link a video showing why. Now, also, this is the best method by far for thicker muscles, but not suitable for the very thin muscles over your skull and jaw. Now, I mentioned before the science have found the points in nine different muscles commonly cause headaches. Now, in this section, we'll go over each of the muscles individually, showing where the common points are and recommend the best treatment for each. Then, as I promised at the end, I'll show you the practical summary where you can check them all very quickly. Now, the first muscle we'll look at is the upper trapezius muscle, which, as in this diagram shows, runs from the base of your scale down to the tip of your shoulders. Now in this diagram next is mark the common points in the red where they refer pain to. So as you can see, the common points are across the top and they refer pain to the side of your head. Now examining the upper trapezius is very simple. Now use the fingers of the opposite hand to work systematically from the tip of your shoulder to the base of your skull. Now for pressure treatment, you can use your fingers to, uh, from the opposite hand to apply the pressure. You may be able to pinch up parts of the muscles or you can use a tool like this. Now, if you've got the equipment though, by far the easiest is to stick on a massager. Now, if you use a tool or a massager, always use the opposite hand. Now, if you use the same hand, it tightens the muscles you're trying to relax. Now, the next muscle is sternocleidomastoideus, or SCM for short. Now, you'll be able to feel it running from just below your ear to the bump at the top of your chest. Now, there's a lot of very sensitive structures under this muscle, but you can easily and safely examine it by pinching. Now what you do is you turn your head to the opposite side and make, to make it stick out, find where it starts just in front of your earlobe, then gradually work down the muscle with pinching examination. Now if you find the tight tender spot that shoots pain, I use the pressure technique with moderate pressure for 10 seconds repeated for a total of five times. Now the next muscles are the suboccipital muscles. Now again with X marking the site, the common trigger points and the red being where they shoot pain to. Now, these muscles are a very common cause of headache, and this picture shows the therapist treating them. Now, you can examine them using the tips of your fingers like this, and the best treatment is pressure techniques using the tips of your fingers or your thumbs. Now, the muscles are very often associated with what we call upper cervical dysfunction, or to use non-technical terms, the joints of the base of the skull locking up. Now, if the treatment doesn't seem to be working for these, or the problem keeps coming back, consult a professional who deals with this sort of thing, like a chiro, osteo, or a postgraduate qualified physio. Now, as this diagram shows, the splenius capitis muscles at the back of your neck, with the top being just above the suboccipital muscles we've just examined. Now, examine them as easy with the flats of your fingers, and if you find any points, you can use your fingers to apply the pressure, or if you're careful, you can use a vibration massager. Now, the next four muscles I'll be discussing are the thin muscles that cover your jaw and skull. Now, running through them one by one, there's frontalis that sits on your forehead, second is occipitalis, which sits at the back of your skull, and next is temporalis, which fans out from the top of your jaw to the side of your skull. And finally, we have the masseters, which are thicker than the others and the ones used to bite with. Now, with these, all you need to do is uh, work in a systematic way, gently examining with the pads of your fingers. Now, as I said, because the muscles are very thin, often any lumps will be too small to feel and you'll just find some tenderness and tightness. Now, when you do find these, try and find the center of the problem 
then apply moderate pressure until you feel the tenderness fade or for a maximum of two minutes and then finish off with a gentle circular rub. Now, the last muscles are called scalenes. Now, as this pic shows, they sit in front of your neck where there are major nerves and blood vessels, plus the vertebrae underneath have sharp points. Now, luckily of all the muscles, they're probably the least important because it's too risky to massage them themselves. Now, as promised, I'll show you the systematic way to check them all. Now, you might do them in a different order, but here's an example. Now, we'll start with the four muscles of our head and jaw. Now, using the finger pads of both hands, I can start around the front with the frontalis, then the temporalis and masseters at the side, and finish with the occipitalis. Now, next we move the muscles at the back and side of your neck. Now, if we start at the top, we have the suboccipitals deep, with on top of that the splenius capitis and the upper trapezius muscles. Now, we can work down the side of your neck, right out the tip of your shoulders. Then turn ahead to the side, do the sternocleidomastoideus. Then we turn the head the other way and we can do the other side. Now, you don't even have to remember the names of any of the muscles, just systematically cover them all. Now, also, so you don't have to keep referring back to this video, we've got an article with info, pics and diagrams linked in the description. Now, hopefully this video has been very helpful and if you have any questions or comments please don't hesitate and uh, thank you very much for watching and it has been most appreciated.